Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is on the trigonometry of acute angles, part one. Uh, if you're trying to infer anything from the title, yes, this title is to imply that we'll eventually deal with the trigonometry of non-acute angles, or obtuse angles. Uh, we'll take trig functions, sine, cosine, uh, and tangent of angles that are bigger than 180 degrees, or even bigger than 360 degrees. And uh, oh yes, we're going to be dealing with radians instead of degrees very shortly. Um, we're even going to take the trig functions of negative angles, and in order to be well prepared to learn all of that crazy abstractness, you really need to just start with the acute angles and know that really, really well. This is going to be the basis of what we do for the next two quarters. So you've probably had some introduction to trigonometry, either in your geometry class and or your algebra 2 class, and when I ask students what do they remember about trig, it seems to always come down to Sokotoa. Uh, even those that don't remember anything else can remember Sokotoa. And you know what, as a starting point, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I will warn you right now, for the first of many times, that there are a lot of little mnemonic devices, tricks out there that are supposed to help you memorize trigonometry, and I ask that you stay away from most of them. Most of them are garbage, in my opinion. Uh, they rob you, they, they come down to cute little you know, mnemonic devices that rob you of the actual understanding of the thing you're supposed to be learning. Um, stay away from most of them, but Sokotoa I'm fine with because uh, if you recall, it is intended to help us recall what the, the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios are, and really that does just come down to memorization. So if you don't already know, um, how Sokotoa is useful is that it reminds us that sine, the S, is the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. There's the so in Sokotoa. And the C-A-H in Sokotoa reminds us that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the toa in Sokotoa reminds us that tangent is opposite over adjacent. And again, that really does just come down to memorization, I have to admit. And you need to memorize it soon. You need to memorize it well. So let's recall real quickly, even though I know that most of you have had some introduction to trig, let's recall real quickly um, what that means, sine, cosine, and tangent in terms of opposites and adjacents and hypotenuses. Um, I'm going to be asking you, by the way, prompting you many times throughout the, the year, say, uh, what is sine? And you're expected to say opposite over hypotenuse. Or what is tangent? And you say opposite over adjacent. You need to know that very well. So let's recall that when you're looking at a right triangle, uh, that the hypotenuse is always the side length that is across from the right angle. So we see the right angle right here, and the hypotenuse is right across from it. And uh, the adjacent and opposite are relative to theta. So if you look at the angle theta and you ask yourself which side is opposite theta, there are two sides left, and that one that is right across from theta, that is what we'll call the opposite and the one that's right next to theta. There's two sides right next to theta. There's this side and this side. Well, one of them is always going to be the, um, the hypotenuse. So the other one that is not the hypotenuse is the adjacent. So if we had, let's, let's use our favorite Pythagorean triple here. Let's say that we had the 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean triple. And in this case, we would say the sine of that angle theta is opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case is 4 over 5. Uh, we'll say that the cosine of that angle theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, or 3 over 5. And we'll say that the tangent of that angle theta is 4 over 3. Um, notice that we don't even know what theta is in terms of either degrees or radians. Eventually we'll find a way to, uh, we'll discover a way to find out what theta is, but we're not interested in that moment or, or at, at this time. Um, we'll just accept that whatever that angle theta is, its trig ratios uh, uh, are as we've put up here. One thing I want to remind you, or, or point out, if you hadn't noticed before, is that you really do need to write the theta. And I see a lot of students just writing things like, sine equals 4 over 5. Um, that, that's sloppy and it's just inaccurate. It's uh, incomplete. We need to be very clear what angle we're taking um, the trig function of. So um, let's make it clear whether this is theta or this is theta. And if I'm trying to take the, uh, the trig function of the other angle that's not theta, I need to find some way to express that. Um, notice that if theta changes, if I move theta over here, that all of a sudden 
um, the opposite and the adjacent trade places. So the hypotenuse is still the hypotenuse, but the opposite comes down here, and the adjacent comes over here. That's what happens when, you, um, when theta is switched. So if I just showed you a picture without any theta in it and asked you to take the sine, cosine, and tangent, that would be an incomplete question. You have to reference it with respect to theta. Um, one other thing I want to caution you, I'm not going to harp on this too long right now, but I want to caution you, make sure that you are able to uh, label your triangle accordingly, um, even if it's not in our typical orientation. We're, we're so used to seeing right triangles, you know, right side up, so to speak. But um, if you see something like that and you see theta there, we should still be able to identify that the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. Um, we should still be able to look at theta and say, okay, across from theta there is the uh, opposite. And adjacent to the theta would be right here. So um, don't, let it, don't let it throw you if you see a triangle that's oriented differently. All right, so with Sokotoa in mind, um, some of you may already be familiar with the three uh, remaining trig functions. And this, again, just comes down to memorization. Now, I don't think you need another word like Sokotoa. I think um, Sokotoa for sine, cosine, and tangent is enough. Um, but you will need to get down that cosecant is the, the reciprocal of sine. So notice that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and cosecant is just the reciprocal of that, hypotenuse over opposite. Um, likewise, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, and cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Um, I'll admit that we tend to uh, rely mostly on sine, cosine, and tangent, but you do need to know these other three trig functions very well, um, too. Uh, I will point out just some, an observation that might help you remember these and memorize these, is that each of these reciprocal pairs in, includes a co in it. So what I mean is that we've got sine here, and its reciprocal is cosecant. Um, we've got cosine, that's got the co in it, and its reciprocal does not have a co in it. Um, we've got tangent, and its reciprocal does have co in it, cotangent. So there is a reason for that, and there is a geometric connection. If you've ever wondered, does the tangent in trigonometry have anything to do with like tangent lines and circles? Yes, it does, and I'll um, gladly explain that to you uh, at some point. All right, um, so let's go to the type of example that you're going to see on the assignment. Uh, you'll be asked to use one trig ratio to find them all. So in this case, let theta be an acute angle such that cosecant of theta equals 6 over 5, and evaluate the other five trig functions of theta. And I'll point out once again that at no point yet are we going to find out what theta is. Um, that'll come at a later lesson where we'll find out in degrees and or radians what theta is. Uh, in this case, you must start by drawing a picture. I insist. No excuses. You must start by drawing a picture. And I would encourage that you try to make it a reasonably accurate picture. So here's what I mean by that. This is not an easy task, but we have a choice. I mean, I could draw a right triangle and call this one theta. I can draw a right triangle that looks a little bit more like this and call this theta. Or I could draw one that looks a little bit steeper and call this one theta. And I'm looking at the actual numbers that we have, saying that the cosecant is 6 over 5. And I'm going to pick the last one. Um, let me show you why. If cosecant of theta equals, remember, that's the reciprocal of what trig function? Hopefully you're thinking sine of theta. And since sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. And when we look at the actual value that was given to us, that is 6 over 5. So I want to draw a triangle where the hypotenuse is 6 and the opposite is 5. I'm looking at those two numbers thinking, you know what, they're pretty close together, so I'm going to go with this last one. I'm going to say that the hypotenuse here is 6, and this opposite side, the, the side that is opposite the theta that I've labeled, is 5. Um, and you'll see why, if, you, if it's not clear yet why I chose that last picture, um, it will be shortly. Uh, I, I'm going to ask you, what is that last side? 
And hopefully you know what famous ge geometry rule we will use to figure out that last side. And hopefully you'll say that's the Pythagorean theorem. Um, now I'm going to do this very quickly, but I will say I've observed that over the years there are always uh, some students who just are a little bit shaky on their Pythagorean theorem. So I ask, if that's you, if there's anything that's confusing you about it, um, please come to office hours and let's practice the Pythagorean theorem. In this case, if I call this A and I want to find out what A is, I would say A squared plus B squared, which is 5 squared in this case, equals um, C squared, which is 6 squared. And if I were to solve that, again, I'm going to do that very quickly here. And I'm just going to jump to the chase and say that um, A squared equals 6 squared minus 5 squared. That's 36 minus 25. That's 11. Um, and actually, I wrote that wrong. Let me put this. A squared equals 11. Therefore, A equals square root of 11. So again, if any part of that uh, confused you, um, please come to office hours and let's uh, work it out. Now, if you think of what square root 11 is, I don't expect you to know it to a, a huge number of decimal places, but I do expect you to know that 3 squared is 9 and 4 squared is 16. So um, square root of 11 is somewhere between um, uh, uh, 3 and 4. Okay, so therefore that's why I chose the last pictures because I want to make sure that this side, which is three point something, is drawn less than this side, which is uh, five. This isn't going to seem like a big deal at first, but trust me, some of the stuff we do later on, that is going to be um, very helpful. So let me erase, clear some space here. All right, and just uh, so I'm a little clearer with my labeling, that A there is what we are calling the adjacent side. All right, and now we're ready to do our remaining trig functions. Uh, I usually like to set up um, the six trig functions, even though I've been given one of them. I'll put sine of theta, remember to write the theta, cosine of theta, uh, tangent of theta, equals, equals, equals. And I'll do the same thing through reciprocals. I remember sine as a reciprocal of cosecant, which is abbreviated as such. Do get the abbreviations down quickly, please. Um, cosine of theta has a co in it already, so it's reciprocal is secant. And tangent's reciprocal is the easiest one to remember. It's, oops, cotangent of theta. All right, and we were given, again, that cosecant equals 6 over 5. That was given to us. So 6 over 5. So one of them, even without the picture, is very easy to, to see, and that is that sine is just a reciprocal of the cosecant. Now for the remaining ones, we'll look at the picture and say cosine of theta, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's root 11 over 6. Um, secant is the reciprocal of that, so that'll be 6 over root 11. And if you're wondering, what about all those times my previous math teacher pestered me to, to um, rationalize the denominator with expressions like this, we're not going to worry about that. I'll explain why in class, but we're not going to worry about that. We'll just leave it as 6 over root 11. Um, tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. That's 5 over root 11. And therefore, cotangent is root 11 over 5. And there we have it, the 6 um, trig functions of theta. And again, I repeat, we never found out what theta was. We can guess that it's something bigger than 45 degrees, and we'll again get into radians later on. But that's how you do that type of problem. Let me have you try on your own now. So here are two, and you know the drill. Um, pause the video at this point, try it on your own, and in just a moment I will reveal the solutions. Okay, so I'm trusting that you've uh, done these on your own. Let's look at the solutions. Uh, for A, whoops, I think I, there, that's what I wanted. Um, for the first one, uh, these are your solutions. And you should have a picture that, again, if you're drawing it, trying to draw it reasonably correct, you should have something that's sort of shallow like that where the opposite is smaller than this adjacent. Um, and theta is right here. Uh, for part B, should have something that looks like that. Uh, your drawing should look a little bit steeper. 
Uh, in this case, secant was equal to 3, so I hope you realize that that means that that's the same as uh, 3 over 1. And that would make the opposite square root of 8, or if you prefer, 2 root 2. Again, at this point, I'm not going to be super picky about which one you do. You just need to get used to seeing it in either form, in the, in the back of the book, or on my examples, or tests, or whatever. Um, so again, if you had square root of 8 in here in your answers, that's fine. I'll accept that at this point. You just need to know that 2 root 2 and root 8 are the same thing.